So if you're a junior React developer or you're just getting started with React, probably writing your React code wrong. So in this video, we're gonna see the essential React naming conventions you should follow as a junior React developer to write cleaner and easier to read and easier to maintain code. So I'm gonna see all different varieties of stuff like following how to write pages, uh, components, hooks, variables, props, and so much more. All right, so let's get started with folder structures and folders naming conventions particularly. So here, most of them, like a lot of JavaScript or React projects in here have sort of the same like aspect in here or, or folder structure. So you're always gonna have like an SRC in here where all your you know source code is like living inside of that one. There's a public folder in here which has the assets that are publicly available throughout the web server and like users or other websites or other tools can be easily accessing that one. And here you have some couple of files like the index.html, have like the configuration for Tailwind, for example, post CSS, uh, the TS config js in here maybe v's config in here now let's go inside the src and this is actually the main important part so the src in here has all of our code and we need to make sure we structure our code the right way so for our setup in here we have like eight main folders starting with the assets and assets in here are anything related to like images funds uh specific stuff that you're just going to be represented as an asset like an svgs or something like that now we come to our most important folder in here which is pages now the pages in here is actually where the main pages for our application actually live and what i mean by the main pages for example let's take this application is a multi-page application that means we have like a home page and we have another page that just allows you to render products we have another page that allows you to see like the top rated products so this is what it looks like for example we've got the home page in here and if we try for example go to products this actually we see oh the all the list of products can here be fetched from the database and see all of that so if you go to the, like you know top rated products or something third folder in here is actually the components and from the name in here you know this is actually where all of our react components actually live inside and mainly those components are reusable. So we can have any component, for example, have a cart or a product, and we can reuse those components across different pages. For example, I can use the product in here on the top rated product, and I can use it at the same time on the product. We have all our folders like hooks. This is actually where all our hooks lives. We have the services. This is actually where all of our services lives. And services, what I mean by service is actually like your gateway or main point to communicate with a database or something or with an API. So the service in here is gonna like be responsible for fetching data, submitting data, to the API so all of the actions are going to be just like encapsulated inside the service in here and you can like use that service as a function or as a class or just like an object that has a bunch of methods inside of it and you can just write use it here we got the store so if you're using redox or zoo standard or any other store management for example using like redox toolkit in here the stores folder is actually where all your stores should be living and all the configuration related to stores for typings in here you have all the typing for example all the type interface like the cards how a product should look like and everything this actually where it should live a sign inside as well. And last but not least, you got the utils in here. So the utilities in here are gonna be like, you know, whatever utility you have, for example, some calculations you're doing, something not related to component rendering or not related to the UI itself. Now, when it comes to naming conventions, let's go ahead and get started with the pages because that's the main important folder in here. So for the pages in here, what you wanna do, always use Pascal case. And that's just simply because pages are very important. So just like using Pascal case, you're starting with an uppercase letter in here and you combine it with like other words are always gonna be starting with an uppercase letter. So that will tell the actual developers that are working on the same code base in here that pages here and those files are actually an important files. Like they are the main entry point files for our code base in here because those are the main pages that's all the components, all the logic is gonna flow from. So those are actually like the starting point. So you don't wanna use something like about dash us in here. You wanna always use Pascal case in here. So something like this, you know, a homepage in, inside of it, there's a component starts with an H, like, you know, Pascal case as well. So instead of just using about us in here, because that's a bad practice. Now for file names, actually it depends on what the type file is. For example, in here, we got the up in here, it's because he uses the Pascal case. So it starts with an uppercase letter. That's because the up in here is actually kind of sort of like very important, like the entry point for our application where they have a router, we have the provider, we have like, you know, you know, this is actually where the routing starts. So that's basically an uppercase uses Pascal case. But other than that, most of the times, like nine, 
90% of the times you want to use camel casing like this one main.tsx in here. So like this is actually camel casing. So I would always suggest using camel casing file names and particularly file names that are outside the pages folder. Now for our components and reusable components in general, I love to put my components inside of folders. Each folder represents a single component and like any components folder in here, you can have multiple sort of files and components related to that components itself. So for example, in here, you got the card draw in here, and you have the index, like the index in here tells you that this is the main entry point for the card. So this is actually where the main component lives inside of the index. But if you need to, you know, split it into multiple components, just to make it easier and readable. So you can just put a multiple component in here, you can just go and use the card draw in here, and you're done, you can put it inside of the same folder. Now for naming components, you always always want to use Pascal case naming in here. And you always want to export like a function, I don't like exporting that, you know, const something like it looks like a variable, I love to export like a function that immediately tells you, Oh, this is a function component, like a react an actual function of react components. So easy to know that and of course, you want to use Pascal casing. So you don't want to use you know, something like this, you don't want to use a dash or you don't want to use snake casing. All right, when it comes to props, you don't want to use any type of like naming convention for props in here, you always want to use an interface. And you want to like maybe you want to export that because it could be used by another component that depends on your code base. But for naming convention, you would want to always use a Pascal case for props in here because you know, you just do like products props, you don't include the I in here, that's outdated. And you just provide like oh props, product props. Now for functions, for example, in here, we have a UTL, we have cart to TypeScript, this particular file here, we have a function that allows us to calculate the total price of our cart items. So whatever items you have inside of a cart, we can just use this function to basically get the total. Now, there's actually two things. First one in here is actually the bad approach where this actually it all depends on the name of the function, because the more descriptive name you put, the easier it's going to get and the easier it's going to be, you know, it's just going to make your code cleaner and easier to read. For example, when you take for instance, this function in here does a calculate and what it does as well is actually includes a VAT rate. So it calculates some taxes as well before checkout. So from the function name in here, but just looking at the name in here, if you're just like another in another file or something and using or just looking at the function name in here, you don't know exactly what it's doing, you know that Oh, you're getting the total from a card, but you don't know exactly what's happening. You, if you're doing get maybe you're fetching it from somewhere, what, what is what do you mean by get exactly in that our case? And also, we're not specifically telling it we're including the VAT rate in here or the taxes. But instead, for the good, like the good name in here for the function, what you should do, for example, Oh, you give it a verb like, Oh, calculate, and that means Oh, we did this function is going to do the calculation for us. And we know this is cards when it's going to calculate the total with VAT. So the name in here is very descriptive. Just by looking at the name in here, I can easily tell like what the function does. And I just know that's going to calculate something for our card items. And from the parameters in here, I know it takes cards and it takes product. And as simple as that. Now, if you go to variables, which are basically the same thing as functions, so they need to be as descriptive as possible of what the variable has. Now, they are a little bit different from functions, because functions has a like something to do whether they get you something, they return something or they do an action, but a variable is just for holding a value. So it should be like a noun something. So here, from this, we got two things. So we got the first bad approach in here, we're using use memo, what we're doing, we're filtering through products. And we just like filtering products in here by the rating. So we're getting like top rated products for our web page in here, which is called top rated products.tsx. And we just simply returning that but now we're putting inside of a variable called filtered. I mean, from the variable, do you know exactly what the variable holds It holds a filtered but filtered what I don't know what the type of value it has. I don't know what is what is it to do with that? I mean, just by looking at the variable, I don't exactly know what's happening. But the good approach in here, you should like include, you know, have a pretty decent variable name in here, at least. So you can do oh filtered products by rate. And that tells you immediately, oh, this will include a products array that are filtered by rate, just like that. And of course, for variable names, you always want to use camel casing the same thing as functions. All right, now when it comes to hooks, the same thing, all of them actually play a major role in the naming convention. So make sure always to use like a descriptive name for your hook in here. And the thing in here for hooks, because react has actually a very specific naming convention for hooks, you always need to prepend a use before the hook name. So just by following that immediately, you know, or any other developer works on the same code base in here knows that by just looking at this, oh, this is a hook immediately, and it should be used inside of a functional component. 
And the same thing, naming convention is always camel casing just to make it easier to read and, and very simple. And last but not least, which are TypeScript interfaces, because the reason we're covering this in React is because 99% of the times using interfaces here, you're gonna be using it for props or something, and interfaces are actually a very important thing. Whether interfaces or types, they are basically the same thing. So the same naming convention here applies to both of them. So for example, here, the bad approach for naming interfaces, you always start it with an I. I used to do that a lot in the previously, but now like everything changed in TypeScript, you no longer need to do that because that actually makes it very specific and interface actually very broad and they have a lot of things they can do. So for example, here, instead of doing I products, you can just name it store products. And yes, for interfaces, you would wanna use Pascal case because interface represents a type. And when it comes to constants, variables or constant global variables, you always wanna name them as an uppercase, like all uppercase with an underscore instead of doing like a camel case or something, you know, like the whole community actually agrees on that. So just always using an uppercase for a constant variable makes you immediately know, oh, this is a constant sort of variable in here. It just has a value in here and that's it. To better enforce actually having a good naming convention across the project and just to make sure, you know, all the team members actually following the same conventions, you wanna use something like a linter because I have like two rules I always love to use for ESLint in here to kind of like enforce a good naming convention across my projects. And the first one is called like camel case, which is kind of like a, a rule that allows you to enforce camel casing for variable names in here. It has a bunch of options in here, but this one just allows you to have camel casing for variables. So there's actually a pretty good one. It doesn't have a lot of like, you know, flexibility. And there's the other one, which I really like, but this actually needs from you to use TypeScript ESLint plugin in here. So you can just go in and like search TypeScript ESLint in here and see how you can set up this one. And this is actually very, very customizable. You can have a bunch of stuff in here, like it's creating the different options. So for example, inside of my ESLint, what I'm using, I'm using camel case error. So that just gonna tell all my variables to be camel cases in here. Otherwise I'm just gonna throw an error in here. And here for the naming conventions of like the TF TypeScript ESLint naming convention, I'm using an error. And and I mean, giving it actually a different options in it. For example, for a variable, I wanna make sure it's actually a camel case and I can just like lead in underscore I'm allowing to add any underscore at the beginning of the variable, like something like that. Um, modifiers in here should be like exported variables should be camel case and so much more. So for example, if you try to do yarn lint in here to see exactly what we have, if you see the errors in here, for example, there is a expected empty option in here. For example, there is an identifier, which is is open, he uses snake case and he tells you, oh, this is not a camel case. I can't accept that. So that just immediately warns you about that. So it doesn't allow you to like commit your code that is looking pretty bad in here. Or for example, here you got, oh, interface name I product must not match the reject. So you should not start with an I in here. So that makes it a lot about more, you know, easier for you to know and find the issues across by just using those rules. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the naming conventions and catch you hopefully in the next ones.